Hello everyone and welcome to my little corner of the internet. Today I'm just going to do a little tutorial on how I color and shade and use clipping layers in Fire Alpaca. I still have a lot to learn with digital art, but I thought that I would share what has been helpful to me so far. Generally, when I have the line art done and I'm ready to color a drawing, I make a separate folder with layers for every part of the drawing that's a certain color. For example, in this drawing, I have separate layers for the skin, the hair, the dress, and then also um, I have a layer labeled gold and a, label and a layer labeled turquoise. I fill in every area that's in the correct color on its respective layer with a fill bucket tool, and sometimes the fill bucket tool will leave little empty spaces around the edges of the drawing, so you'll want to adjust the tolerance accordingly. And when you're doing your line art, you'll want to make sure that all the lines meet up meaning that this is a closed shape with no gaps, because otherwise the fill bucket is going to color in the whole page or the whole drawing. And to fix this, you can either go back to the line art layer and fix the gap, or you can use this feature here, the close the gap feature. After I fill in the flat color, I go to one of the individual layers and I make another layer above it. Then I make that layer a clipping layer. Once the layer is a clipping layer, you will only be able to draw within the boundaries of whatever is filled in on the layer below it. Since I have, so since I have this layer on clipping above my skin layer, my drawing is only going to show up on the character's skin. If you turn off clipping, you'll see that it's going everywhere. You could do multiple clipping layers for the same layer, and the clipping layer at the top will show above the clipping layer below it. Now there is a more effective way to do this without making all these individual layers. And this way is to make one layer in which you fill in the entire drawing with the fill bucket tool and then make a second layer. On that second layer, you turn on clipping and manually color everything in. This is honestly a lot faster than the way I do it and it means that you have fewer layers to deal with, you don't have to worry about labeling them. But of course it also means that you have to be more careful to color inside the lines and make sure that you separate anything that you want to change the opacity on. When I color a whole drawing like this, I always make sure that I use at least two clipping layers, usually more, just because of the way that I do my shading. And you can always combine layers later if you have too many, but it's nice to have separate layers so you can fix things without messing up other parts of the drawing, and you can change the opacity on anything you want. To start shading, you'll first want to pick a color to shade with. Generally, you don't want to shade with black because that can start to give your drawing a sort of muddy look, so it's better to shade with another color. Red and purple shades are my favorite to use, especially for skin, and as a rule of thumb, cold light will cast a warm sh cold light will cast a warm shadow, and warm light will cast cold shadows. So I'm going to decide right now that I want this character to be standing outside in the sun, which is warm light, so I'll want to use a kind of purple-blue color for my shading. The next thing you want to think about is where the light source in the drawing is coming from, and whether it's coming from the side, from above, or from below. If there isn't an obvious light source in the drawing, like the sun, or a lamp, or a candle, you can just pick a direction, but you want to try to keep it as consistent as possible. For this drawing, since I don't have the character against the back uh, against the background or in any specific scene, I'm just going to arbitrarily pick the upper left of the page to be the light source. Usually if I don't know where the light source is coming from, I choose the upper left. And of course, areas that are further away from the light source, or are in some way in shadow, are going to have shading on them. To be honest, it does take some practice to master where to shade, and I found that the best way to improve is obviously, yes, to practice, and to just observe how lighting looks in real life and in pictures. As you can see here, I still do have a lot to learn about lighting and shading, but um, I have uh, been able to improve my technique significantly just by observing pictures. What you do want to avoid with shading is pillow shading, which means that you want to make sure that you're adding variety into your shading the same way you vary line weight while doing line art. Just like with the line art, there isn't going to be a consistent line of shading all the way around that's a consistent thickness, because some areas are going to have more shadow in them and some will have less. You'll also want to vary the values of your shading, and usually the way I do this is by doing two layers of shading in some areas. The first layer should be on the bottom, just for the very darkest areas, and I turn down the opacity on this layer just slightly. Then I do a second layer above the first one and go over all the other areas that are in shadow, but uh, maybe not quite as dark of a shadow. I then 
I then lower the opacity even further for this layer, which kind of gives a sort of cell shaded gradient. And if you want to, you can also add texture with tools like the Bleeding Watercolor Brush or the Canvas Pencil, which are both built into Fire Alpaca. But I try not to do this too often. I will sometimes do that for clothes or for the backgrounds, but I use it sparingly because you can usually get a cleaner look by only using the pen tool. You've also probably heard that you should never use the airbrush tool to shade, and I'll admit that I break this rule all the time. I love to use the airbrush tool, especially for skin. Once I finish the cell shading, I'll go over the skin and add blush, highlights, and just some general variation to the character's skin tone. I find that this just makes them look more alive, because if you look at your own skin, you'll see that there's a lot of color variation, which is a good thing, because if it was one solid color, you would kind of look like plastic. Another thing I like to do if the character has freckles is to use the particle brush, which is also built into Fire Alpaca. You can adjust the settings to get more realistic looking freckles. I like to have the particle random up pretty high, um, pretty much to the top, and the color jitter up to about 30. Again, you'll just want to experiment with what looks best with your art and what looks best on your character. For hair, I usually like to use the pen tool that fades in and out. If you have a drawing tablet with pressure sensitivity, you can just kind of flick the pen, but if you don't, this tool is great. I like to use at least one color that's different than the base color, and I generally go darker, but you can also add some liner highlights if you want to. I'll make a clipping layer and do a few lines that follow the direction of the hair. Then I add another layer either above it or below it to shade, and sometimes if there's direct light on the character's hair or if they have particularly shiny hair, I'll make a third layer on top for airbrushing in the highlights. Like this character, for example, is wearing a wig that has a lot of wax and like hair product in it to make it stay in its correct shape. So it is going to be a little bit shinier. You can also see that I'm using the smudge tool, which I've, I've heard people say that Fire Alpaca smudge tool is terrible, but I do tend to use it for hair. I just kind of push the airbrushing around so that it follows the hair more naturally. It is a good idea to avoid overdoing the highlights in the hair though. I found that it's better to do no highlights or fewer highlights than you need than too many because they can also start to make the hair look plasticky or artificial. You also don't want to have more than one or two lines of highlights basically on the hair um, because that looks kind of unrealistic. Obviously, this is just what works for, for me, so if you have your own way that works for you, that's great. And in my opinion, there's no real right way to make art. And even if there was, I guarantee you I would not have it. <laughs> in my opinion, the right way is what's easiest for you and allows you to communicate what you want with your work. Because for me, that's really the goal of making any type of art. I'm just trying to transfer what's in my brain to other people's brains. And as always, the best thing that you can do is to just experiment and find what works for you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was uh, helpful or at least entertaining. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.